This peaceful village does not seem greatly different from tens of thousands all over America. To preserve them and the way of life they represent, our nation went to war. But this is not just an ordinary town, as its street markers indicate. Highways and houses look like others everywhere. And so they were planned. But during the global conflict, they camouflaged a giant factory where men and women worked 24 hours each day, building one of our most potent weapons for victory. From this factory have come armadas of airplanes that have made world history. Boeing, just a six-letter name. But it represents administration and engineering buildings, acres of factories, here in Seattle, in Wichita, and Vancouver. It stands for engineering skills and manufacturing know-how gained from the broad experience of many years. It means that intangible spirit and will to anticipate tomorrow's needs. Design the best and build it better. War provided the ultimate test of design and production skills. Boeing B-29 super fortresses proved themselves invincible in the air conflict in the Pacific. Around these mighty bombers was built the entire final plan of warfare against Japan. Never before had an aircraft manufacturer been given such tremendous responsibility. The challenge was met, and the success of the Boeing B-29 set new standards in reduction of drag and increased efficiency. New design relationships between the wing area, horsepower, and airplane weight were introduced. And the Boeing 117 airfoil was proved in 100 million miles of combat flight. From these wartime developments have come tremendous advancements for peacetime flying. Earlier in the conflict, the B-17 Flying Fortresses spearheaded aerial assaults in Europe. The B-17 was America's first four-engine bomber. Back in 1935, it was the world's most advanced sky weapon. Crew members everywhere boasted that the flying forts could be trusted to get them to their targets and home again. And again, Boeing built for the future when in 1938, it created the Stratoliner. America's first four-engine commercial transport. With its revolutionary pressurized cabin, the Stratoliner brought new luxury and comfort for passengers, opened the smooth, weather-free upper levels for transport use, and established new speed standards. Commercial practicability of over-ocean flying was proved by the sturdy Boeing Clippers, which in 1939 pioneered transatlantic service and extended Pacific air routes. The Clippers made thousands of ocean crossings during the war with high priority cargo and passenger loads. Their dependable performance is traditional. Back in 1933, America's first twin-engine all-metal low-wing transport was the Boeing 247. Its basic design has been followed by all transport planes since. Yes, Boeing has always built tomorrow's airplanes today. By exhaustive study in aerodynamics, metallurgy, structures, power plants, electronics, acoustics, and related fields. Into each new project go the correlated efforts and genius of more than 2,000 engineers, each a specialist in modern design. This Boeing wind tunnel producing air flows in excess of 700 miles per hour is one of the most advanced in America. Exact scale models of complete airplanes or sections are placed in the tunnel. Dials and gauges record on automatic printers, lifts, drag, moments, all the things engineers must know. And it was here that the Boeing 117 airfoil was developed, the most efficient yet devised. It was proved on the B-29 and is incorporated in the Stratocruiser. In another of Boeing's many research laboratories, engineers test equipment for sub-zero operation conditions. Looking like men from Mars, they study the effects of low temperatures. For Boeing equipment must function perfectly at all altitudes and under all weather conditions. Using the finest machinery obtainable, Boeing workmen fabricate and assemble the new aircraft units which hundreds of experiments have proved thoroughly efficient. 
In the final assembly, huge wing sections of a Stratocruiser are carefully lowered into place. Wings which soon will sweep through the skies, carrying passengers or cargo at hundreds of miles per hour. Blueprints and templates are translated into fuselage sections, which fit together with the precision that results from master craftsmanship. And here it is, the 377 Stratocruiser, bringing entirely new concepts of speed, passenger comfort and luxury, payload capacity and low operating cost to forward-looking airlines. The Stratocruiser is a short-range, medium-range, and long-range airplane, all incorporated in one efficient basic design. It meets all demands of the most varied passenger and cargo operations, from domestic, short-distance, high-density traffic, to long-range, over-ocean luxury travel. And it has the same rugged construction as the B-17 and B-29. As these passengers are checked through the field gates, Many recall that in January 1945, the Stratocruiser set a new transcontinental speed record for all types of airplanes. One more Boeing first in a proud list. On that flight, the Stratocruiser had reached 30,000 feet altitude and covered 250 miles in 56 minutes. In two hours, 650 miles out. Three hours, nearly halfway. Four hours, Chicago, just ahead. Five hours, south of Toledo. In six hours, three minutes and 50 seconds, Washington, D.C., an average of 383 miles an hour. Because of its two-deck, three-cabin design, the Stratocruiser may be adapted to all types of operation, whether cargo, high-density passenger traffic, or the ultimate in luxury travel. This chart illustrates the standard arrangement for low fare transportation with 3-2 seating to accommodate 81 passengers. With this staggered arrangement, each individual seat is easily accessible from the aisle and there is no crowding. Even with 81 passengers, 900 cubic feet of cargo space is available. Another interior arrangement provides seats for 60 passengers by day and night berth accommodations sleeping 30 singly to as many as 58 with double occupancy. This close-up shows berth arrangement. Note day position of seats. This cross-section shows position of the seats in daytime, and this, the night, with lower and upper berths ready for occupancy. Both berths are a full 44 inches in width, have ample headroom, and will sleep two persons in comfort. For all cargo operation, the Stratocruiser has a volume of 5,720 feet, a maximum payload of 39,000 pounds. Note the large volume and spaciousness of the upper cabin, which means more space per passenger, greater freedom to move about. This wide, full-height doorway to the main cabin provides easy entrance and exit for the passengers. Located at mid-cabin, it speeds loading as passengers go both forward and aft to their seats. As the passengers are being seated, an all-cargo version of the Stratocruiser is loaded in another section of the airport. Loading is greatly simplified because of the airplane's truck bed level doors. Also an important design feature of cargo compartments in the passenger version. With three openings for quick loading, larger units are handled through these rear double doors of the cargo Stratocruiser. Trucks can be backed under these doors. The power hoist lifts loads up to 5,000 pounds directly from the bed or on preloaded pallets. No handling by hand is required. Energy for this unit comes from an electric power source independent of the main engines. Cargo is traversed on the overhead rail to any position in the main cabin. While overall dimensions of the Stratocruiser are only slightly larger than comparable four-engine aircraft, its work capacities are substantially greater. Here is the outline of a well-known contemporary airplane. Its dimensions are only slightly less than the Stratocruiser. This is another contemporary four-engine aircraft. The Stratocruiser carries a much greater payload than either of these airplanes and flies it faster, farther, and at lower cost. The combination of high wing loading, aerodynamic cleanness, and two-deck fuselage design helps give the Stratocruiser its marked superiority. With a 19,500 pound payload, 
The cargo plane taxis out to start a 2,500 mile non-stop flight. This graph shows the payload and range possibilities of the Strata Cruiser under actual airline operating requirements, including three hour reserve. For ranges up to 2,050 miles, the Strata Cruiser has 23,600 pounds payload, 81 passengers and 9,830 pounds of baggage and cargo, for example. At 2,500 miles, the payload is 19,500 pounds. A standard loading of 67 passengers and 8,110 pounds of baggage and cargo. At 3,000 miles, payload is 15,100 pounds. 60 passengers plus 4,900 pounds. At 3,500 miles, 40 passengers plus 4,200 pounds of baggage and cargo can be carried. Even at 4,000 miles, the Strata Cruiser has a 7,000 pound payload. With all passengers aboard, the stewardess closes the pressure sealing door. Switch on. And the number one engine with 3,500 horsepower roars into action. Note the convenient overhead location of switches. Number three thunders its power. In the soundproof control cabin, pilots converse easily. And so the Sky Leviathan moves toward another flight through the stratosphere. Today's standard transport looks small indeed by comparison. Destined to play a dominant role in global air transportation, the Strata Cruiser embodies all the outstanding qualities of earlier Boeing aircraft. The engineer sits between pilot and co-pilot. By using the same controls and instruments, operation and maintenance are greatly simplified. The steerable nose gear of the Strata Cruiser makes ground handling easy. Throttles open, and 14,000 horsepower leap to their task. Off easily, with a ground roll of less than 2,200 feet. Reverse pitch props and big efficient brakes mean equally short landings when required. The pilot may climb the ship at any desired rate. But the Strata Cruiser is pressurized and air conditioned. No longer need rate of climb or descent be restricted because of ear and sinus discomforts of passengers. The automatic hot wall, no draft cabin heating and cooling system operates both in the air and on the ground, independent of the main engines. No unpressurized airplane can provide the travel comfort of the Strata Cruiser. Here is a typical airplane and pressure flight plan. While the Strata Cruiser climbs quickly to 15,000 feet, the cabin pressure is held at sea level. At 15,000 feet, the Strata Cruiser levels off, the passengers still at sea level. Then as a higher altitude stop is approached, the cabin pressure is reduced at a very slow rate. The pilot is free to descend the airplane at whatever rate he wishes, and the passengers step out of the ship acclimated to the airport altitude. Continuing its flight, the airplane again climbs quickly to 15,000 feet, while pressure is held constant. The entire airplane is pressurized, as comfortable for the crew as for the passengers. Then as the destination is approached, pressure is gradually increased to sea level. The passengers deplane without having been aware of altitude change on the entire flight. Another flight might operate at 25,000 feet. The white line shows flight path. Yellow, the pressure path. At 25,000 feet, cabin pressure is 5,500. Again climbing, the cabin pressure holds constant. Like two airplanes, one maneuvering freely, one keeping passengers at low, comfortable altitude. With inside cabin conditions set for maximum comfort, this passenger decides to really relax. And the alert stewardess adjusts the new siesta type seat. When cruising through space at 340 miles per hour grows dull, passengers can descend the circular stairs to the lounge on the lower deck. At intermediate stops, passengers can be loaded through the lower aft cargo compartment which leads directly into this lounge. The door of this compartment has self-contained loading steps. 14 passengers are accommodated in the lounge. Pay space on short trips where maximum loading is indicated 
or lounging space for passengers on long ones. For the first time, travelers have freedom to move about in flight. An intercommunication system links all portions of the ship. Even high in the stratosphere, life follows a familiar pattern. Passengers get hungry and the galley reports to the stewardess that lunch is ready. This is the galley, a real kitchen in the sky. There's plenty of room for storage of food and equipment, and everything's handy for rapid service. The lounge steward doubles in the galley during meal service. Food like this adds to the pleasure of flight. With such facilities, every passenger is afforded a hot, tasty meal at all times. So as the passengers enjoy themselves in the lounge, take naps, read or dine, the Stratocruiser annihilates distance. Its high wing loading smooths out bumps and cuts through turbulent air when encountered. In the calm stratosphere, the plane is far above rain clouds and storm. Up front, the crew has exceptional visibility ahead and to the rear, on both sides, and up and down. Flat glass panes at correct angles eliminate distortion. The instrument panel is below the line of normal forward vision. Pilots who have flown the Stratocruiser say it's a pilot's airplane, a sweet airplane to fly. Stratocruiser can be flown with several crew combinations due to simplicity of instrumentation and controls. Flight operations can determine size of crews, pilot and co-pilot alone, or with an engineer, radio operator, and navigator. Spacious soundproofed cabins give crews maximum comfort and reduce fatigue. 14,000 horsepower drives the spinning propellers, power from war-tested Pratt & Whitney Wasp major engines. Thermal anti-icing is provided for main wing and empennage. The stability which made the Boeing Flying Fortress and Super Fortress such excellent bombing platforms is inherent in the Stratocruiser's aerodynamic design. Its stall characteristics are highly superior. Another safety factor, simplicity of controls and extremely low control forces inspire pilot confidence. Soon, over all the world's skyways, the Boeing Stratocruiser will be flying, bringing the nations closer together, playing an important part in building international understanding. Because it incorporates the same advancements that made the Boeing B-29 the outstanding airplane during the war, the Stratocruiser offers higher all-round performance, higher profit potentials than any competitive transport. The airline that operates Stratocruisers will be in a commanding competitive position. For the Stratocruiser is truly tomorrow's airplane today.